Good afternoon. My name is Lynn Wilson and I'm the Operations Manager of the National Association of Disability Practitioners, NADP. I've created this video to introduce you to the new report that NADP published last week. This report considers the well-being of disability professionals in the further and higher education workplace. We've been receiving anecdotal reports from many of our members concerning the high levels of stress and anxiety they've been experiencing, with very high workloads and constantly shifting working environment, with changes to both institutional structures and procedures, on top of the changes in government support for students. This came to a head in 2018-19, with several reports of disability professionals leaving their workplace without another position to move to. They just needed to move. All of our directors discussed the situation at our strategic planning event in 2019 and the picture revealed across the UK was not encouraging. To support our members, the decision was made to investigate in detail and carry out an initial survey of members' experiences. A literature survey revealed research had been conducted on the mental health and well-being of both students and academic staff but nothing was found concerning mental health and well-being for professional staff. It took some time to design the research and past ethics approval, but the Publications, Research and Ethics Standing Committee of NADP managed to launch this survey in January 2020. We ran this until the end of March 2020, so the end of this time coincided with lockdown due to COVID-19 which has added some interesting aspects to the research. This survey was designed as an initial review of the perceptions of disability professionals working in UK institutions in relation to factors which may impact on mental health and well-being. It has revealed some pockets of excellent practice with disability professionals reporting a good working atmosphere, supportive teams, excellent work-life balance and effective management at every level. However, the majority of respondents reported a difficult working environment, both physically and emotionally. Their support came from colleagues at the same level, their professional associations and immediate line managers. Many were disheartened and felt undervalued. I carried out the analysis personally and, by immersing myself in the data, I came out with several themes, including both the physical environment, the atmosphere, the workload, and the solutions that institutions are trying to implement. To be honest, the analysis was distressing. I read accounts of how people felt undervalued, tense, and even scared. Respondents used strong and emotive terms to describe their distress. Some suggested that senior managers have struggled to manage the rapid move from a cooperative institutional environment to one that relies on both internal and external competition. Change management is a complex process that requires threefold management, looking not only at outcomes, but also interests and emotions. Research points to a concentration solely on outcomes at the expense of staff interests and emotions. Arguably, this situation could be framed as a breach of psychological contract. This is an unwritten contract formed of the mutual beliefs and perceptions between an employee and employer. A breach of this contract can be perceived by employees as a betrayal and often leads to high dissatisfaction levels and complaints. This report suggests that institutions with staff reporting poor well-being need to take action immediately to ensure that support for their staff is re-established and support for disabled students continues successfully. It's often overlooked that the satisfaction of disabled students depends on the support negotiated by disability professionals. We do need to look at the facilities of disabled students but we also have to look after the well-being of our disability professionals. The current focus on the disabled student experience has been universally welcomed, but this report illustrates we cannot just address the surface issues. We need to delve deeper to address all inequalities, all circumstances. The first recommendation coming from this report was for institutions and concerned change management 
many of our survey respondents indicated that they were very sympathetic to the vast changes that institutions have been facing over the last few years, with a complete change to adjust their operations in response to increased competition, technological advances, student expectations and other pressures. It appeared that change management had only been partially implemented. Detailed plans for the outcome had been developed, but very little effort had been made to ensure buy-in by employees and to support them emotionally. Our second recommendation was that the DfE consider issuing recommendations for addressing the working conditions of disability professionals. Some of the working conditions reported were very worrying, with a lack of privacy for student concerns and unsanitary environments. It would be possible to move quickly on addressing some of these issues and improving staff, staff well-being if recommendations were produced for minimum working standards. They should include looking at working environment with privacy, security and cleanliness, looking at the ratio of disabled students to staff, and professional accreditation and CPD recommendations for disability staff to allow them to continue develop, to develop professionally. We intend to take forward our third recommendation ourselves. More research is required to further elucidate the differences between institutions where staff are reporting high levels of positive well-being and others where staff report very low levels. We're currently applying for funding to resource phase two of the research, which would work to elucidate the reasons for these contrasts, with the aim of producing an accurate picture of current conditions in the sector and generating a positive model for change. This has been a basic summary of what we've been doing to address the issues raised by members, but the full report is available on our website resource pages under NADP publications. Please don't hesitate to contact me on admin at nadp-uk.org if you have any questions or comments. As operations manager, I am in close contact with members and I often see the results of their experiences. This research has been high on my priority list and I'm very pleased that we managed to complete the report in time for conference. Please feel free to distribute the report amongst your colleagues. We've already received some positive responses from the Office for Students and the Disabled Students Commission, but the more we make people aware of the situation, the more pressure we will be able to exert to ensure conditions are improved. Thank you.